So let's talk torque. Torque wrenches, torque specs, why things need to be torqued, what has to be torqued, what doesn't have to be torqued. And again, for the home engine builder, for the guy who's just cutting his teeth on this stuff and trying to pick up as much information as they can. And this is a timely subject because we assembled the bottom end of our 3D3, the Slag Hammer build, and I've got to torque everything. So this is the perfect time to do this. So let's start off with like, why torque? Um, or what is torquing? We think of things like cast iron, cast aluminum, bolts as being very hard. But the truth is, they're flexible. In order for them to do their job, they have to be able to flex. Castings have to be able to move around somewhat, and bolts have to be able to stretch. Bolts are actually, think of, don't think of a bolt as, like a, as a hard fastener, but think of it as a spring, because essentially that's what it's doing. The tighter you wind this spring, the tighter, the, the more you pull on it, the more tension it's going to retain. Conversely, when you're dealing with, a, a, let's say, a cylinder head, the head is very flexible. The deck of the block is also very flexible. And the crush of the gasket is important. So having those bolts, having the head bolts torqued not only in the right sequence, so that they make the head lay down flat and make the gasket squish out flat, but maintaining the proper amount of torque is important. Not enough torque, and what will happen is, as the engine goes through its expansion and cooling cycles, the bolts will actually loosen up. Too much torque, and you're distorting things. You're pulling the deck, you're making the cylinder walls not be, you know, not perfectly round, because as you pull up on the deck, you're pulling out on the walls. So, that's and that's why, Honing with a torque plate, if you're building a serious engine, honing with a torque plate is important because the hone job you get with that deck loaded with all of the fasteners in place and the deck pulled up is different than the hone job you're going to get when everything is just relaxed. The proper torque spec is what maintains that balance. Okay. Now, everything with a fastener has a torque spec. Like literally everything, if there's a fastener involved in it, it's supposed to be tightened to a certain degree. And that has to do with the composition of the material, the job the material has to be doing, or the job the part has to be doing. But while everything has a torque spec, we don't generally torque everything. We don't torque the, the headlight retainer screws. We don't torque our fender bolts. We don't torque uh, the bolts that hold the... the the fan to the water pump, right? These things we make tight, they're good enough. But when you're dealing with critical components that need to maintain a, a specific relationship to each other, that's when the torquing becomes essential. And on an engine, yeah, there are lots of things that, that should be torqued, but theoretically should be torqued. But on an engine, the, the three things that are absolutely critical to be torqued are the main bearings, the rod bearings, in the heads. Everything else you can kind of sneak away with, it's just tight enough, or it's right, you know. All right. So that's where you explain why the head gasket is so important, but what about the rods and the mains? Well, in this case, the cap has to maintain the bearing shell to a certain amount of crush. So basically, the bearing shell is bigger than the hole that it occupies. Not by much, just by, by thousandths of an inch, two thousandths of an inch. And when the cap, either the rod or the main, is properly loaded to the block, it's, it's maintaining that crush, that proper crush, and that's really what keeps the bearing from spinning. When you're torquing things, there's a sequence, like when you do a cylinder head. Most people are familiar with torquing a cylinder head, and you'll have the, the sequence where you start in the center, and then you, know, you do one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And you work your way out. Well, when you're doing a cap, you have to bring it down evenly. So you don't want to have one side you know, really tight and then go back and do the other side. You want to bring them down evenly. I'm going to do this, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's because if you tighten one side more than the other, you're not going to get a true torque reading. All right, so that's why we torque things. And what about the actual torque wrench itself? So I use these clicker types. 
And the reason I use these clicker types is because I'm a double clicker. Now, there, there, there are arguments about that. People say, no, double clicking is no good because you're over torquing. But that's not true. You're, when you double click, you're not going past the point of, of the click. You're only confirming that there's a click. There are several different types of torque wrenches. You get the very simple beam torque wrench. You have the digital readout ones. You have all sorts of different torque wrenches. But these are the most basic, the most reliable. This, well, the beam the beam type is definitely simpler. But these are these are these. You know, you can't go wrong with a clicker type. So, why do I do the double click? Because I want to make sure that I have an absolute true torque reading. Like, for instance, let's say you're, you're bringing down a fast, let's say you're tightening down a head bolt, right? Or tightening down one of these main caps, one of these main cap bolts. If there's any foreign objects, like for instance, oil, if you've got oil, in excess oil, in the hole that the bolt goes into, as you tighten it down, it's compressing the oil. So you'll get a click. It's not, you didn't truly torque that bolt. All you did was bring the bolt down to where it, it can't compress the oil anymore. Now, if you wait just a fraction of a second, just a second or so, that oil will start to migrate up the threads. And as it migrates up the threads, there'll be less pressure, and you'll be able to get another turn. You'll be able to actually move the bolt some more. By double-clicking, you know that each of those holes is true. You know that, you know that there's, no, there's no foreign material in there, there's no liquids in there. Now, in a perfect world, no, there's never any issues. The threads are always perfect and there's ever, never any foreign objects or debris in the hole. But in the real world, it's not like that. So the double click ensures to me that we got the right, the, you know, it, it's, 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 not, it's not a false torque, it's the true torque. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to run through this engine and, uh, all right. So we already know what our torque specs on these. We know that we're going to go 85 to 90 on the rods, on the mains rather, and we're going to go 45, 50 on the rods. I like to go to, to the higher side. Now, if you go too far, you're distorting that, that remember, the, the bearing has to hold or the cap has to hold the crush. So if you go too far, you're going to distort it. Five pounds to the tight side, it's okay, it's fine. Um, it's, it's within the margin of error. So when you store your torque wrench, always break it down to zero, right? You know, you adjust these things by turning the handle, right? So after you've done, you're going to put it away for the, you know, you're done with your job, always break it down to zero because it is spring-loaded, and if you leave it sit for too long, the spring won't be accurate anymore. If you take care of these, they'll last forever. If you don't take care of them, they, get, they can get sloppy after a relatively short period of time. So I'm going to do the mains first. Got my socket. Um, so we see, we're going to go to 90 on these mains. Lock it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to sneak up on it, okay? So we're going to go like that, 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 that. See? And then we're going to go back. Second click. Second click. Move forward. Double check. It's just important to be even with them. That's that's the thing. You just want to make sure you're bringing it down even. Some people, they'll they'll be okay. Well, it's gonna if I'm gonna to torque it to 90, I'm gonna to go to like 30, and then I'm gonna to go to 50, and then I'm gonna to go to 70, and going. You don't have to do that. Just, you, you'll have a feel, just keep turning them and, you know, evenly, evenly, back and forth, back and forth. You don't have to, you don't have to sneak up on it at a specified pace. Just nice and easy. And now you see, I just broke my own routine because as I explained in that video we were talking, when we were assembling a bottom end, I like to do everything in one shot so that I'm not disturbed, but I'm making a video and I'm disturbing myself. 
So now I know that I did number three. I'm going to go back and double check it anyway, even though I know it's done. Okay, it's a little awkward because I'm trying to do this. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to have to stand to the side to do this one. I am happy with that. Now we'll rotate the motor. And everything seems nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the rods. So with that, we're gonna switch sockets. And we're going to break this back down to 50. Lock it. So that's my last two cylinders. I'm going to rotate the motor now just to make sure that everything is still nice and happy. And it is. So now we'll do these two. You see what I'm doing? I'm sneaking up on it slowly. Is, that, is this entertaining? People are always like, oh, we want to watch you work. I hate being watched when I'm working. But we got to do this for science, right? Okay, last one now. I'm going to go a whole revolution. And the motor still feels great. Now, we'll spin the motor. And that is one happy bottom end. So now the last thing I'm going to do before I, I put the oil, the, uh, the oil pickup and the oil pan on here is I'm going to drizzle some oil down on the pins to make sure that they're lubricated. And that's it. We can flip this thing over and do the top end, which we'll do next, tomorrow.
So that's it. Torquing stuff. I, I hope you got something out of that. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow.